What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Join Ninja Nation, the best baseball community on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Joe Ryan, who had six strikeouts in six and a third innings, giving up two runs. He had these fastballs and nasty sliders. Ryan was up against Kohei Arihara, who had three strikeouts in six scoreless innings, including one on this slider and splitter. Eduardo Rodriguez had these two seamers on his way to five strikeouts in five scoreless innings, and he outdueled Shohei Otani, who only had two strikeouts in four innings. Apparently, he had a stomach bug, but did have this splitter, and I love this here as he yells to warn the Tigers bench. Even Shohei giving up runs and having the runs doesn't prevent him from being a good Samaritan. Jacob Junis had six Ks in six and two-thirds innings thanks to this nasty slider and this painted fastball. Luis Castillo didn't have a great start, but he did have this pretty changeup. Sean Manaya had four Ks in seven innings, giving up only one run, and had these two seamers. Ryan Pepio had seven Ks in six innings, giving up only two runs, and had this fastball and slider combo. And he outdueled Sandy Alcantara, who actually got shelled. He gave up 10 hits and six earned runs in only three and two-thirds innings, but did have these change-ups, as well as this nasty slider and 99-mile-an-hour fastball. Ryan Yarbrough had these filthy curveballs on his way to five strikeouts and four and a third scoreless innings. Alec Manoa had eight Ks in six innings, giving up only one earned run thanks to his fastballs and his slider. He also had the very rare two White Castle specials in one inning. There was a little drama after he hit Aaron Judge. And he gets pumped. The two later agreed that it wasn't intentional, but that didn't stop Garrett Cole from trying to start something. After the game, Manoa said if Cole wants something, he could walk on past the Audi sign painted on the grass. I've been struggling with my sinker for about five, six starts now, and um, I made a pitch and uh, obviously hit Judge, and obviously uh, I looked at him and I said, man, you know, I'm not trying to do that, and I think he understood that, and um, I think if Garrett wants to do something, he can walk past the Audi side next up. Manoa's ERA this year stands at 2.66. Nesta Cortez had a solid outing this game with five Ks and six innings, get up only one run thanks to his change-ups and fastball, which touched 95. Nestor's ERA this season is now 2.68. Justin Steele was absolutely brilliant for the Cubs, thanks to his fastball and these wicked sliders. He ended up throwing six innings with nine Ks, nice, giving up no runs and two hits. Brandon Woodruff was also solid this game, thanks to his fastballs and change-ups. He had five strikeouts and five and two-thirds innings, giving up two earned runs and four hits. In the Sunday night game, Nick Pavetta was outstanding with nine strikeouts and five and two-thirds innings, giving up only two runs and had this pretty curveball. I love the home plate view of Pavetta's curveball because you can really see the drop on that. He also had these nasty sliders. Dean Kramer also had some filthy curveballs on his way to four strikeouts and five and a third innings. I also love the Orioles being featured wearing Pitchy Ninja shirts. Although I'm pretty sure that's not Kyle Bradish, and it's really Nick Vespi. Jose Urquidy had six strikeouts in seven innings, giving up two earned runs, and had his changeup and nasty breaking balls working. But my filthiest pitcher of the day, that was Charlie F. and Morton. Charlie Morton had 11 strikeouts in six innings, giving up only two runs. And his knuckle curve, once again, was absolutely sick. In fact, he had 13 whiffs on his curveball yesterday and now has a 41.5% whiff rate on that curveball this season. And the key to that curveball has been its spin rate, which averages 3,072 RPMs, which is the highest among starters. He also had the filthiest pitch of the day with this backdoor curveball. This curveball had an amazing 17 inches of horizontal break and had a spin rate at 3,128 RPMs. And I overlaid it with this 95-mile-an-hour fastball from Morton, which was clearly a ball, so you can see why Alvarez took it. That fastball ends up way off the plate, and that curveball somehow comes up and catches the zone. If you see a pitch in that tunnel, your brain's telling you not to swing, but the umpire's telling you you probably should have. Now onto my filthiest relievers. 
Cianel Perez had this lane-changing slider. Taylor Hearn had this filthy slider. Jason Foley had this wicked two-seamer. Gregory Soto had this 99-mile-an-hour heat. Matt Barnes had these dirty curveballs. Felix Bautista had this ridiculous splitter. I mean, look how much that thing drops. And check out this Little Leaguer's face behind home plate. He is utterly impressed. But my filthiest reliever yesterday was Jose Alvarado, who had this mix of overpowering fastballs and disgusting cutters. Unhittable. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. I am not sure what's going on here. This is utter chaos. But I think technically, there are now five outs. Was the catch made? If so, they'll be able to double up the runner. This was. And there was no tag. That should be three outs. This is beautiful this to watch. Tag them here. Tag There's them all. two runners tag out there. everybody. That was awesome. What is up, Ninja Nation? My picks of the day today are from Michael Kopech to have six Ks or more and from Max Scherzer to have eight Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 